Um, today is another tutorial Tuesday. Oh my god, um, the saxophone is still what we are we'll be talking about today. I hope you get a new thing today. Okay, all right, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us today in our tutorial Tuesday. I'm always excited uh, when it comes to sharing thoughts with you. Today, I'm particularly so excited about the things I'm going to be sharing with you. These are things that you need as a beginner, you need as an advanced player. Every one of us need it to be the best that we can be on saxophone. Now, what is this thing we are talking about today? We are talking about the tone of the saxophone. Now, when it comes to the tone of the saxophone, it's something you should not joke with because that is what distinguishes a learner, an amateur, from a professional. Tone. tone. Yes, tone makes the whole lot of difference. So, so it takes some of these great saxophonists, yes, building their tone, building their tone. It takes you time. So, but today I want to just share seven tips that will give you a that will help you to get a that professional stone that you desire you've listened to great um saxophonists great jazzists you you are you just wonder this kind of tone we're going to give we're going to give you every tip you need to sound like a qualum sound like this gerard bryce sound like dave co sound like everyone that you so much admire today i'm just going to share those things with you just free of charge. All right, guys, let's jump into it. Seven tips that will give you a professional saxophone tone. Now, the first thing I'm going to be talking about is your mouthpiece. This is the mouthpiece of the saxophone. It matters so much because this is what produces the sound. This is what produces the sound. Now, you can have the reed. The reed make, gives you the vibration. And then this is the guy that actually determines the vibration of the of the of the reed and then together they make the sound now there are different types of mouthpiece you have the brassax plastic you have the plastic and then you have the mouthpiece. iron mouthpiece every other these are the two main ones that are really um common that you see around so i started i started with um the plastic one later I, just, I needed something to raise my reed and give me that hard tone that I want. So I went for, I went for uh, iron mouthpiece. And then sometimes while we are learning, we started with a kind of a mouthpiece. Later we have to change this mouthpiece because it was giving us problem. Sometimes you pick a saxophone that is not yours and then you just blow it. And then it sounds so soft, so easy. You know, no, you check it, check it and like that. Ah. It's still, it's still the same type of saxophone, but the sound is sound different. If you check it, most time is the if either the difference in those two sounds is in the reed or the mouthpiece. Most time, the difference of the ease with which you get your sound in the mouth in the saxophone is determined primarily and most importantly by your reed and by your mouthpiece. That's so we have talking about the size of uh, mouthpiece. First thing, um, the size ranges from you have size 3, you have size 4, you have size 5, you have size 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on and so forth. But for as a beginner, I would advise that you stick to 3, 4, 5. Uh, don't stick to 3 or 4. 3 or 4 size of this. When you want to go to the market, ask them, I want to buy saxophone mouthpiece size 3 or size 4. Now, let me give you a practical example of what I mean. This is the soprano saxophone. I don't want to just give you something that I cannot prove for you. Now, this is soprano saxophone. Now, I am getting all my notes, the low note, I'm getting it. And then it's the same sax. I'm going to change the size of this mouthpiece and then play. I will use the same size of reed, but you let us see what is going to be different. All right, I just switched my mouthpiece from my four. This is size four. This is size seven. Wow. This is size four. This is size seven. 
Now look at the difference. This one I was playing at ease. I was playing at ease. I was getting all my low notes. And then you heard what I just played. Now I'm going to play size 7 of this same mad piece. And then you see what I'm going to get. <laughs> I'm still able to blow it because I've been playing saxophone for more than almost 17 years now. So, and um, so I'm able to blow it because this is size 7, this is actually my size. But if you are a beginner, you play with this size 4. Now, I am that was that time about a few years ago when I just got when I got this sax. This this came with it size 4. So, but I was I now I I I was playing it was so sweet, so I threw away my old, old saxophone, the other uh, uh, soprano sound that I have, and then I, I I was thinking, wow, this one is so simple to play. I, at least I was just playing fluently, and then I just said one day, I just let me just insert the old my mouthpiece of my former soprano saxophone inside this. Jesus, I couldn't play anything. I was just and then. I said, okay, then I now remove this three, this, I mean, this mouthpiece, and I strapped into my other, other old, uh, soprano saxophone, and I was getting the same sound I was getting from this Yamaha. So uh, the, the difference was not much. That one was Premier England, this one was Yamaha. You know, they had their sound differences, but much of the differences were coming from the kind of mouthpiece that they came with. So this is 4C. So if you notice why I was playing this, I was, I added strength. Do you notice that I had to add that strength to get it? So if you don't, if you're a beginner, you know you don't have that strength, you may not. And then if you also notice, this one was giving me air. Yeah. I was having this this kind of sound on it. Why this one was just giving me? Then this one, I had to adjust my embroker to be able to get my low note on this size seven. So and then, but if you notice something, this one gave me that depth and yeah. that strength I needed. So if you're if you are looking for that sound that gives you that has this depth and strength, and then you are you want to growl, you are looking for that altissimo pitch, you go for the higher one, provided you have the strength, your jaw, your your muscles are strong for that. So it really some of you that are struggling, you are discouraged, you drop the sax. Some of you, you thought that the sax was the sax you got was not a good one. Just try this number one tips I'm sharing with you, and then go and get different type of um mouthpiece and then try and uh, experiment another practical example i can give you is talking about the type this one this is my tenor plastic uh, mouthpiece and then this is my tenor um iron mouthpiece if you check the size here there are sacks. what size is this seven this is size seven this is size seven and this one is just size four so this was the one I was using when I was when I was learning. This was what I used. Now I have upgraded to size seven. The reason I upgraded to size seven or ten is that I needed that strength on stage. I needed that. But while I was learning, I don't need that strength. I just needed something that will be giving me what I want. So when you are starting, not don't go and start for you. Just I remember there was a time you were using iron, iron mouthpiece. I was the one that told you no. This was the iron mouthpiece. Where is it? Veranas was using. This is size seven. She was there was a point she wanted to follow me, you know. Ah, my guy is using a, a tenor, he's using an iron mouthpiece size seven, which I want to use. So she upgraded to this. It was seriously giving her a lot of struggles. Another mistake we did was that while she was upgrading, we ought to drop the size of the reed. If you want to upgrade your 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 mouthpiece to a higher size, just if you are using size three before, what do you do? Come down to size two and a half of the what? Of the reed. Of the reed, so that it will compensate for that increase of strength. Then when, as you grow up, as you, as you, you develop your muscles, you now begin to what? Increase. increase and then you, you balance. So I think by now she can use this um, with size, whatever size you want to use, size two and a half. But I usually don't allow her to struggle on stage. So that is that for that. Now, the second thing is your reed. Your read is so important in determining the kind of tone you get. Yeah. Now, what is, what, is, what are the type of read, the sizes of read we normally have around here? 
We have um, let's start. We have, I see one and a half. I see size two. I see size three. I see size three and a half. I even see size four. But I, I will advise you when you are coming up, start from size two. If you start from size one and a half, most likely, you, except for a child, you, if I grown up, my own to start, don't start with all those low ones because you will almost be sounding one kind, you'll be wondering. So I always advise my students, get size two. So while I'm teaching them the higher notes, I will tell them to increase from two to two and a half. And then when they start learning autismo, and then they start uh, having to minister on the largest, uh, with larger audience, audience, I tell them to switch to size three. What size do you use now? Three. Size three. All right, guys, let's, the, the third tip is where you actually position where you actually position your mouthpiece. your mouthpiece this is actually how when you want talking about the tone of the saxophone the tone of the saxophone is determined also by the depth of your mouthpiece into the cock of the neck so if the saxophone i'm going to demonstrate now i'm going to demonstrate with I'll put the, the mat piece into the saxophone. Let's say, let's divide this into four. One, two, okay, half. This is one yeah. over four. Two over two, that's half. Mm. And then three over four, and then four over four. So we first of all go one over four. All right, so putting the mat piece at the tip or just one over four, I'm going, what note is it going to give you on the saxophone? Blow it with a sax, just blow. He's giving her a G. He's going to give her a G. Wait. He's going to give her a G. So I can get three notes. I can get F. On the low side, adjust my embroker. Then I get G. Why you are going to get G? So if you just blow with every strength you have, you can't get above G. But you can go lower, F sharp, and then go lower again. Now let's put it into the middle now. Right in the middle. What am I going to get? I'm going it's going to it's going to sharpen the sound, the tone I'm going to get now. What will you get? She's getting a G sharp. And that's the peak she can get. But if you adjust your, your, your mouthpiece, your embroker, I can now get G, the G sharp. So, if you place your, your mouthpiece on the middle, you see, I have stepped up the tone. Now let's push it to three over four. That is almost before you get to the end. Divide it to four. You are at the three over four now. What is the note you are going to get, Vera Sax? Vera Sax is getting A, A, key A, key A. Now if I, if I, if I reduce my embroker, release my embroker, I'm going to get A, then I'll get G sharp, and then I'll get uh, G. What if I go deeper? to the end of the mouthpiece, of the cork. 
So what am I going to get? It, Rasa, what will you get? She's going to get A sharp. She's getting A sharp. She's getting A sharp. Now, if I adjust as usual, A sharp, A, D sharp. So I have That's how it goes. So, which of these are you going to pick as the best? Now, if I'm going to be playing on the, the auto saxophone, is an E flat instrument, it, which means this when I'm on my C on this sax, the keyboard, the other concert instrument, are supposed to be on their E flat. So you are going to be playing whatever your key C gives you with the keyboard. That is the name of that instrument. If your key C on trumpet gives you, your key C on trumpet will give you a B flat here. Your key C on tenor saxophone will give you what? A B flat. That's why it's called a B flat instrument because your key C is sounding B flat. B -flat. My key C here is sounding E flat. So that's why it's called the E flat instrument. So what is going to happen is that if I'm going to blow now, I'm supposed to sound, whatever I'm going to get is supposed to give me, I'm, I'm supposed to play, I'm going to play my key C, it's supposed to give me the E flat on the keyboard. What is it giving me? Means it's wrong. So let me play C again. Give me C. Play key C on the high. Now, this is key C, but it's, it's okay. This is key C, but it is sounding E. Is this an E instrument? No. But this is actually an E flat instrument. So whatever your C is giving you here, it's supposed to be. Or with my E flat. So why is he not getting it? Now, there's there are many ways he can get it. She can just reduce her embroker in a way to actually fall back into that E E flat. That's I can reduce. It will not give me an E flat. But that is not my embroker when I'm playing naturally. When she's blowing naturally, her natural embroker should automatically just give her an E flat. So if he's not giving her an E flat, she's supposed to do something about it. What will she do? Means she's above the E flat. So she will just what? Come out to three and a half. I mean three over four. And then if you blow now, she's gonna get she's gonna get that that E flat. She just does that E flat. Now, now, she has gotten her E flat. If I go to the center, she's still, she's still going to get maybe a D or struggle to get that E flat if she has ear training. With ear training, a, a, a musician that has ear training knows that no, I'm not on key. So the adjustment will be fast because he will just use his what he's hearing on his mind, adjust his mouthpiece to quickly get it. But as a beginner, you may not be able to adjust your embroker couple with your what? With your ear training to quickly adjust. So where your adjustment is going to come from is here, not on your mind. So, so when she was learning, I will give her a sax, she will blow, she will not be on key. I will pick that same sax, I will blow, I will be on key. The difference is because my ear training was stronger than her own. But later, and now with this knowledge, what I just do for her that time was also, you know, either increase or, you know, depending on her, her strength of play at that point. So now, in the middle, what are, what are you going to get? She's going to get E flat as well. But if she's going to drop her, uh, her hair broken, she's going to get a D. Get a D. Getting a D. Now, 
So of course, if you go out, you are going to be almost at sounding D. And you should now look as if it's a D instrument or a C sharp instrument. No. So since we are looking for E flat, so the my recommendation is if you are a saxophonist that has vibrato, where you are going to be vibrato is 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 an alteration between what? The E and the E. This, this is vibrato. Vibrato is between my peak and my so if you have vibrato the best place to keep your 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 mouth your mouthpiece is at three over four but if you are a saxophonist that don't have vibrato yet you stay at the at the center the reason is because you want to make sure that you are between e flat and d not e and e flat if you if you have vibrato you want to compensate that wavering sound by going into the three over four and then it's going to give you the best vibrato the vibrato you need but if you don't have vibrato and you are sounding straight and you want to keep your your sax straight you are not on the high you are not on the low just stay at the middle it will give you your e flat straight don't forget when she blow in the middle she got e flat when she blowed at the three over four she got e flat on the saxophone so it means since she has vibrato i will keep her mouthpiece at this three over four side I hope you get that. Leave your comment below so that if you are not clear, I can. I think this is clear enough. Yeah. You understand? So if you watch this, go rewind it, rewind it. Somebody called me and said, I don't understand what you said. I said, go and watch it again. Sometimes watching it once may not really give you what you, you may not get that understanding. So what you should do is watch it, pause it, rewind, get it again. And then because we will not have that time to be, you know, repeating and repeating things. I think that's something they need to get they need to know so watch it as many times as you can so that's tip number two tip number three i go again tip number one your mouthpiece i've told you something about mouthpiece tip number two your size of reed and how it relates with your size of mouthpiece and then now i've taught you what number three your the positioning of your mouthpiece you know the depth of position of what of positioning of your mouthpiece on the what on the cock of the neck of the saxophone all right that is going to change your sound if you are sounding off that will settle the challenge the next thing i'm going to be talking about in this class is the